I recently wrote a blog article about our these two drugs, uh, anti-aging drugs, and it may prove to be the case. And I wouldn't be shocked in 10 years if women aren't taking low doses of these drugs for longevity, but let's wait and see. All right, so what are the tools of the heart attack, uh, aggressive kick heart disease in the rear prevention specialist? And in the upper left, you see a CT scanner. We'll talk at length about that. In the upper right, you see a ultrasound probe on the neck that's over the carotid arteries. And uh, below the lower right is a digital image of a special carotid ultrasound. A lot of you have heard of lifeline screening at the church, at the school. There's nothing wrong with it, it's cash pay, but it is not the most accurate kind of carotid ultrasound. The most accurate kind is called a CIMT. It's hard to find a place that does it. Uh, my clinic does, but we may be the only place in the state of Michigan that offers it. Uh, many universities don't offer it. It's worth trying to find a place to do it. Um, and in the lower left is a comment about traditional blood work. Traditional blood work may miss half the people at risk for a heart attack. And we're going to talk a bit about advanced blood work, often insurance covered blood work. And increasingly, you can just buy your own lab package. I'll tell you where in a minute. So I never met Dr. Ernest Schaefer, a European vascular specialist and academic doctor, but he said very poignantly about 40 years ago, the best test to predict the risk of atherosclerosis is the demonstration of atherosclerosis. Let's look for it, you know? You wouldn't have a doctor tell you, I think you might have lung cancer and not order a chest X-ray or a chest CT. You would look for it. And we need to stop talking about atherosclerosis. Remember, atheroma, the first part of the word, is a old word for tumor. We need to look for these tumors that are growing in your arteries. Could be the carotids, could be the heart, could be in your abdomen by your aorta. You've heard the term aortic aneurysm of the abdomen and could be in your leg arteries with a simple ultrasound. That's more common in Europe that they'll scan the leg arteries for um, atherosclerosis, simple test. All right, let's move forward. Dr. Schneider, thank you. And you can see in the circle, in this rather busy slide of screening for atherosclerosis, there's a variety of choices, but there's two ways to directly look at the arteries. One is the carotid IMT, CIMT ultrasound of the neck, simple test if you can find it. And the other one is the CT scan that we'll talk about called the coronary artery calcium CT scan. It is the heart's mammogram, the heart's colonoscopy. If you're in this audience and you've not had a coronary artery calcium score, either one, you've already had a heart attack, a stent or a bypass, so you know you have heart disease and you don't need that test. Or number two, you're an amateur. If you've not had a coronary artery calcium score, if you don't know if that number is zero or four or 74 or 748 or 1674 or any number like that, you are an amateur. You are playing uh, with a loaded gun. You don't know where that bullet is in a roulette analogy. And you need to move forward and uh, fill that gap soon, right away. Get that test scheduled. So if you look here, very instructive slides. I wish we could teach more cardiologists this. This is looking at the ability of a heart CT scan, cardiac CT versus a stress test to pick up early asymptomatic atherosclerosis. Could be in heart arteries. And that's what this is about. Could be in other arteries. So if you look early, there's a column that says early where there's no obstruction, no symptoms. The stress test will clearly be normal. And the CT will probably be normal too. But I want you to look in the column that says moderate. This is the key. The disease has started. You don't know it because there's no symptoms unless you have an earlobe crease and your hair is gray and you're bald on top, but you don't have any cardiac symptoms. If you do a stress test, you'll pass it every time. Forget about that executive physical stress test. It is worthless. It is. It tells you your fitness. That's a value, but you can judge your fitness if you can run up and down stairs rapidly and easily. But look what happens, the stress test will be normal 
and you'll get no actual important information. But the cardiac CT scan will pick up those white spots. What are those white spots? Calcium. And in almost all plaques, well over 95%, there's calcium in the plaque. And you can identify this on a simple CT scan, a safe CT scan, a widely available and widely affordable CT scan. So wouldn't you wanna know if you're in the moderate column so you can start aggressively attacking your risk in the future? I tell my patients all the time, we're working on your risk in 20 year increments. I'm not worried about you right now. I'm worried about you in 20 years. And we're gonna start as early as possible. And right now, the moderate column is the most available column to identify. Then as the disease gets more advanced, you see the column, 50% blocked arteries. You still won't have any symptoms, even during pickleball. You still will pass a stress test, but your cardiac CT scan will be very abnormal. Only when the disease is very late, when arteries are 70, 80, 90% blocked, big arteries, will you be short of breath, having chest pressure, having burning in the chest, having fatigue, and then your stress test will be abnormal. And again, your cardiac CT will be abnormal, but do you want this disease picked up late or at a moderate stage? And it is even possible to pick it up at the early stages now. It's available, I'll tell you about that in a couple of minutes, but it's a little bit more expensive and a little bit more exclusive to pick up the early, early. So way back in 2007, a society of cardiac specialists was formed called the SHAPE Society. It stands for Society of Heart Attack Prevention and Eradication. And they recommended uh, take a apparently healthy population, all you people watching this right now and all your partners and spouses and brothers and sisters and parents and children, men over 45, women over 55. And I might disagree with the women part, uh, uh, maybe 50. And if you have serious concerns like smoking or a family history, maybe earlier, and do a test that says it in bright blue, aqua blue for atherosclerosis. And they're talking about get a prescription to get a coronary artery calcium CT scan, find a center that does the right kind of carotid ultrasound, a CIMT, and find out by those two tests, if you're over to the left, yellow, low risk, or way over to the right, very high risk, even though you have no symptoms, and treat aggressively. And this is basically staging. You know, if you were told by an uh, oncologist or a surgeon, well, you got breast cancer, and you were to ask, well, how bad is it? How extensive is it? What stage is it? And they said, we don't believe in that. You would go shop for another specialist. Cardiologists don't talk about staging heart disease. And we can now, and I'll show you that. But this was an early attempt to stage it from a low risk to medium to high risk. And we treat it differently. We're, we're going to treat the very high risk person very different than the low risk person. I'm a yellow box person, and I don't take cholesterol lowering medication because I'm very low risk based on my heart CT scans and my carotid ultrasounds. In fact, I just had a carotid CIMT done yesterday in my office. I'm waiting on the results. I do it about every two years, but I'm a low risk guy, so I don't need an aspirin a day. But many of my patients seem just like me, healthy, fitness, diet, sleep, stress management, and they turn out to live in the red box because we do the testing.